Uh, both uh, Yuval and Aran will be presenting the last talk of our session. Hey, my name is Yuval Shapira, and together with me is Aran Avneri, and today we will present our paper, Deploying Robustness Verification for Few Pixel Attacks, done under the supervision of Dana Drexler Cohen at the Technion. We start with an example of a few pixel attack. Consider this image. It was clearly four, but by changing only three pixels, we fooled the neural network to classify it as nine. In contrast, consider this image of the digit two. In this talk, we will show you how we formally proved that by changing at most three pixels, it is impossible to fool the same neural network from before to change classification from two. Okay, as most of you probably know, deep learning has become a very useful tool, specifically in image classification tasks. Unfortunately, previous studies have shown it is vulnerable to adversarial example attacks. An adversarial example is a slight perturbation of an image that causes a network to misclassify. For example, consider the panda image on the left, which is correctly classified by some neural network. Adding to it this little noise, which is undetectable by the human eye, makes the same network classified as a gibbon, with great confidence. This weakness raises a great concern regarding, regarding safety and reliability of deep learning in neural networks. To address these concerns, various studies have shown methods to formally prove robustness of neural networks, focusing on a property called local robustness. This property means that no adversarial example could be found in a given neighborhood of an image. They typically work with box neighborhoods, therefore we call them box robustness verifiers. Their input is a neural network, an image, and a box neighborhood contains it, expressed by a sequence of intervals, one for each pixels. And the output is whether the network is robust to adversarial example in this neighborhood or not. Uh, we know that these kind of verifiers are suitable for, uh, for proving robustness against uh, attack models that change each, each pixel independently. In our work, we focus on different kind of attacks, L0 attacks. Given a positive integer t, an adversary goal is to find an adversarial example by changing the most t pixels of the image. For example, on the left there is a pole, and by changing a few dozens of pixels, it is misclassified as traffic light. In the right, there is a backpack, which is also misclassified by changing a few dozens of pixels. An important property of the L0 neighborhoods is that they can be represented as sequences of intervals. For example, if t equals 1, the corresponding L0 neighborhood of an image with V pixels is all different perturbations that change only one pixel. So for each such perturbation, the corresponding uh, sequence, it, there is a corresponding sequence of V intervals, each bounding the respective pixel value. If we change just one pixel, then all pixel values should be fixed, but one. And we should let this pixel value range over all possible values, say between zero and one. Since each sequence is uniquely determined by the pixels we can change, we can think of each sequence as the set of these pixels, as you can see in the slide. This representation uh, naturally extends to all values of t, not just t equals one, and we will use it from now on. We can also learn from this re representation that in order to verify L0 robustness of an image with v pixels, we have to verify robustness of all of its t-sized subsets. This representation as sequences of intervals is important because we, because we can use it in existing box robustness verifiers that Yuval talked about earlier. We can use this box robustness verifier in order to suggest a naive approach for solving the L0 robustness verification problem. We can simply iterate over it, all subsets of size t in the image. For each such subset, we can use a, an existing box robustness verifier and on the respective interval neighborhood, as we explained in the previous slide. If all subsets are robust, then the image is robust for L0 attack with parameter t. For example, if I have an image with five pixels, one, two, three, four, five, and I want to verify L0, uh, uh, its robustness with respect to L0 attack with parameter t equals three, so I will have to iterate over all of its three-sized subsets and submit the corresponding a neighborhood to the existing box robustness verifier, as you can see in the example in the slide. However, this approach fails to scale even for t equals three. Uh, the reason for that is that the number of iterations of our naive approach is v choose t, 
when can, which can be exponentially large in the general case. For example, if you consider an MNIST image of 784 pixels and a box robust and verifier that always completes in one millisecond, then for t equals three, our naive approach will terminate after 22 hours. For t equals four, 180 days. For t equals five, 77 years. So clearly we must find a better solution. Our main insight is that if a subset sized K, which is a number larger than T, is robust, then all of its subsets are robust, specifically all of its subsets of size T. So with a single query of an existing box robust and verifier, we can verify multiple T, uh, T sized subsets. For example, if we verify that the subset one, two, three, four is robust, then all of its subsets are robust, specifically all of its subsets size three. So we've proved robustness of four subsets using, using just one query to the existing box robustness verifier. So that means that we can significantly reduce the number of queries to the existing box robustness verifier by uh, submitting to it to a larger neighborhood. However, this approach uh, faces many challenges and questions that arise. Uh, for example, we must understand how we choose the value of k. How do we do that? And how to choose the sets? And if we verify sets of size k, how do we know we've covered all sets of size t, since this is our purpose? And what happens if a set is not robust? Now Yuval will answer these questions. OK. To overcome these challenges, we will use a combinatorial object called covering designs. Given three parameters, mv, which is greater or equal to k, which is greater or equal to t, covering designs deals with finding a group of subsets of size k of our universe, which is the numbers 1, 2, v, minimal as possible, such that every subset of size t of our universe is contained at least one of these subsets of size k. For example, if v is equal to 5, our universe is the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and here we have subset of size k equals 4, three of them, such that every subset of size 2 is contained at least one of these subsets of size 4. Therefore, these three subsets of size 4s forms a 5, 4, 2 covering design. Finding minimal covering designs for uh, arbitrary parameters is a hard combinatorial problem, but luckily this subject has been well studied. Okay, now we'll see how covering design can help us. Assume that we have an image with v equals 5 pixels and we want to prove it is L0 bus for t equals 2. Also assume that we decided to use covering with size k1 equals 4. We will explain later how this decision is made. So here we have three subsets of size 4 uh, in the slide. If all of the subsets of size 4 were robust, we could conclude that all of the subsets of size t equals 2 is also robust because these three subsets covered them all. So we run the box verifier on them. First one is robust. The second one is not. But it does not mean it as a subset of size 2 which is not robust. So we make a refinement step and cover its subset of size 2 using subset of size k2, which is less than k1, let's say 3. And now we run the, the box ver robustness verifier on them. The first one is robust. And again, the second one is not robust. So you make another refinement step and cover its subset of size 2 using, in this case, subset of size 2. Now, we run the box verify on them. The first one is robust. The second one is robust. And the third one is also robust. We go back up. This subset is robust. And the last one is also robust. In this procedure, we managed to find a group of subsets, robust subsets, such that every subset of size 2 is contained in at least one of them. Therefore, we proved that the image is L0 robust for t equals 2. Let's go back to our challenges. Uh, the procedure from the previous slide solves the second challenge. We choose the sets using covering designs. And by the way we choose them, we know that we cover all of the subset of size 2. What happens if a set is not robust? In this case, we make a refinement step, if possible, if, if its size is greater than t. And if its size is t, we found uh, a subset of size t which is not robust, and, and we can terminate because we know that the image is not uh, L0 robust for this t. Regarding the first uh, challenge, which case should we choose? Now we can rephrase it more accurately at which refinement strategy to choose, meaning which sizes k1, k2, and so on to choose in our refinement strategy. 
So we want to choose the funding strategy efficient as possible. For that, we use programming, uh, dynamic programming and sampling. Uh, the technical details are, are in our paper for those of you who are interested. This method basically considered the trade-off uh, between the, considered the trade-off. When k is small, it is more likely that the subset of size k is robust. But when k is large, it has more subset of size t uh, that it covers, and we can prove them all at once. The, the two main parts that you've all just described, the cover and design procedure and the method of sampling and dynamic programming, are the two components of our contribution in the paper, an algorithm called Calzone, a certification analyzer for L0 neighborhoods. We implemented Calzone and evaluated it for T from 1 to 5 on several known image datasets, such as MNIST and C410, and on several neural networks, uh, convolutional and fully connected. And now we'll discuss these results. So in the table, you can see the re our results for the MNIST datasets on few selected uh, networks. Uh, first, we consider the different uh, values of T and the number of subsets of size T that had to be verified. We can see here the exponential growth of this number. Uh, for T equals 1, 784 subsets had to be verified. For T equals 3, it already becomes 80 million subsets. For T equals 5, 2.4 trillion subsets. So we see again the importance of just iterating through them all. Let's take a look in an, on an experiment we did with a convolutional network and T equals 3. Uh, here again, we had to verify 80 million subsets. We gave Calzone, Calzone a timeout for each image. We set a timeout of 30 minutes per image. And we gave it 100 images to go through. Out of them, 98 images were correctly classified by the network. And out of them, Calzone determined that 87 were robust for attacks with L0 attacks with parameter T equals 3. 11 images were non robust, and none of the images timed out. And in the last two columns, you can see the average execution time for robust images and the average execution time for non-robust images. As you can see, on average, it took Calzone to determine, in either case, uh, less, less than a minute. And as we saw in our results, uh, no more than a few minutes generally. You can also see that it terminates faster in non-robust images than it is for robust images, and it, was, and it is something that was repeatedly true mostly throughout uh, our experiments. And now let's take a look on another experiment, which is more challenging, the case where t equals 5 in another convolutional network. Uh, here, again, we had to verify 2.4 trillion subsets. We set, therefore, a, a higher value of timeout, uh, 300 minutes, and gave Calzone 10 images to go through. Nine of them were correctly classified by the network. Calzone determined that five were robust, three were not robust, and one did time out. As for, as for the average execution time, you can see that for robust images, it took Calzone much longer than the previous case, where t equals three, uh, over an hour uh, on average, and few hours uh, generally per image. And for the non-robust images, it is uh, slower than before the case where t equals 3, but much faster than for the robust images, only a few minutes uh, on average. To conclude, we present here Calzone, the first sound and complete L0 robustness analyzer for neural networks as far as we know. Typically, as we saw in the previous slide, Calzone completes within a few minutes. Uh, on our most challenging instances, t equals 5, as we saw, Calzone completes within a few hours. Uh, we put here a link uh, to GitHub, and uh, we will upload our code there soon, so stay tuned. Thank you. Uh, so we're just at time, so I think there's uh, time for one or two quick questions. Uh, uh, please just introduce yourself. Hi, thank you for the talk. I'm Teodora, I'm from NUS. So I was wondering, um, for L0, you have this few pixels attacks. Do you have any idea of what that means for an image? Like, for example, how many pixels do I, does, it, does this make sense in the sense of like visually imperceptible changes? And if you, and this is the first question. The second question, have you considered other types of distances? Do, do you mean for the first questions, like uh, how much is how much yeah. te like what happens in reality, like uh, how how, mu how many pixels you have to to change to to really fool a network? Yeah. So for example, for L infinity, there are some uh, studies that tell you that like 0 0.3 for MNIST 
is close to what would be considered human imp imperceptible, right? Visually imperceptible. So I'm just wondering for this case, uh, for L0, do you have such a metric that says, hey, five pixels for MNIST is enough for a human to also distinguish that this is a four digit and not a nine? Mm. Uh, we don't really like have this number, like how, uh, how many do you need? But uh, as you see in our really, this, uh, in our first example, you can see the, the three uh, pixels we've changed, and they cause the network to change it to a nine. So it really, you can see that it really closes the, the upper bridge between this. So we can see why uh, mm -hmm. it, it would become a nine, but we don't have like a benchmark that says, uh, I need uh, six pixels, and then I, I guess it depends on the image uh, as well. Okay, and for the second question, have you considered other distances, and how would that, uh, would this approach work for other types of uh, distances? Um, I, I uh, think, like, like for the, the 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 existing box robustness verifier usually work for like L infinity distances, and uh, this approach is 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 really used. It's the combinatorial uh, structure of the L zero uh, uh, distance. Then you have number of pixels that change. Other distances usually say, well, you can uh, the, the distance is not something that uh, has this combinatorial structure. So I don't think it will apply to other kind of distances. Thank you. Right, uh, one last question from here. Hi, I'm Pratik. Uh, sorry again for the um, Look, I mean, the question is interesting. You're phrasing it as a combinatorial question, right? Have you looked at the geometry of this question, which is if I remove one pixel from the set, how much is the distance going to change? How much is the distance going to change, right? If you ask geometric questions as to the size of changes, you might make this procedure a lot more efficient, right? Because you're not doing it combinatorially searching for the option, like the number of combinations, you're searching sort of geometrically. So have you thought about this, this approach uh, at all, the geometric approach? Um, this is interesting, I agree. Um, we basically uh, don't treat all the pixels the same. We don't care which pixel we change, which is not the best. We can improve that, um, and I guess we can choose a covering in a way that pixels which are important in the image, not in the background or something, will appear less. And, and I guess it, it can improve the result. Got it, thanks. Wonderful. All right, thank you, sir. Idea for another paper. All right, um, uh, thank you everyone for coming. Um, and I think there's a, a coffee break at this point. <laughs>